Mr Speaker, I was going to move the motion, but with the time limited, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to speak to the motion. Um, let me say that the reintroduction of a minimum price scheme is the only way this can ever be fixed up. For 70 years, and the founder of my party, the country party, the founder of my party got into politics by introducing a minimum price scheme. And the history books read when a couple of blokes at the big meeting disagreed with him, he took them out the back and gave them a flog. And from then on was called Blackjack McEwen. There's a few blokes over here on this side that probably deserve the same treatment, Mr Speaker. Let me be very formal, Mr Speaker. Jeff Kennett deregulated the market and took away the arbitrated price into the Melbourne market, which destroyed the industry in Victoria. But it did not destroy the industry in New South Wales and Queensland. They were subsequently deregulated. They were subsequently deregulated on the day. Now, this, this is this is what arbitration does for you, right? On the day before arbitrate, we lost arbitration. We were on 59 cents. On the day after arbitration, we we're on 41 cents. So, how can you answer that arbitration is wrong, Mr. Speaker? When the price was introduced 60 years ago, the price went up nearly 400 per cent, Mr Speaker. When in the wool industry, Doug Anthony, in the most controversial manner, introduced the wool scheme, the price went up within two years 300 per cent. And for those larks in this place, there's a bludgery guy here that was yelling out wool. That was the last example you should ever have used. Because when, when uh, uh, the, the wool scheme was introduced by that great man, Doug Anthony, the price went up 300 per cent. When the bludgery guys on this side, when the bludgery guys on this side deregulated the wool industry, precipitated by you blokes, precipitated by you blokes, the price for wool dropped to one third and the income to Australia dropped from $5.9 billion a year to $2.4 billion. I'll repeat that. When it was deregulated, now, now, now the member, I, I don't know his name, the bloke here with glasses, right? I've got no idea of his name. I ain't going to memorise because he already won't be here after the election. But, but he's saying there was a bad thing, right? So it's a bad thing that Doug Anthony introduced it and took the price up 300 per cent, and then let me be very specific, within three years of the deregulation, it fell from five, I'll repeat it slowly, from 5.9 billion down to 2.4 billion. 64 per cent of the sheep herd is gone, right? As a result of the deregulators in this place, in the egg industry, the price to the consumers went up the price to the farmers went down. In the sugar industry, under deregulation, the price to the farmers went down and the price to the consumers went up. Now, I mean, how much evidence do you want? How much evidence do you want? And if the honourable spokesman opposite has had a fall off his horse on the road to Damascus, I'm still in a state of shock because his reputation for being one of the great free marketeers in this place. I'm still in shock, but then if it could happen to St Paul, I suppose it could happen to a lesser light uh, in this place. Um, now, now, what happened? Who got the money in the egg industry if the price went down to the farmers and the price went up to the consumers? $320 million. The boys in the middle got $320 million. In the sugar industry, the boys in the middle got $311 million. And in the dairy industry, with this great champion over here with his glasses on. Uh, he doesn't use them very often, clearly, because he hasn't read anything. Um, in the milk industry, the price went down to the farmers um, from 59 cents to 41 cents. It went up to the consumers, 115 to 156 cents. And piggy in the middle, and I used the word piggy with a forethought, got 11, 
1.1 thousand million dollars of extra profit. So there you go. One 